Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So today um, we have a, uh, another pen video here and uh, I guess it's no surprise this is a Visconti, you can see the box here. Now this is um, uh, my second uh, Visconti pen and second, I guess my second Grail pen as well. Um, this I actually purchased the literally the day after I received my first Visconti, which was the Homo Sapiens London Fog. Uh, this is the Florentine Hills, which uh, did come slightly earlier before the London Fog. So let me um, unbox this video. This is one of the older style with the, the uh, pull-up tabs. And this is the box that it comes in. Uh, it's a sort of a brown lacquered box, really nice, very heavy wood box. Uh, it uh, has felt on the bottom. Um, it's a lovely box. If I open the box, you'll see here is the Florentine Hills. So before we actually dive into the pen, let's remove the pen from here. And I'll just show you what else you get. So um, you actually do get a um, little tab that actually goes on uh, the Dream Touch nibs, and this is called. If I zoom in a little bit. You'll see it here. Palladium nib, uh, 23 cap palladium Dream Touch, and then on the reverse side it will say, "Don't press this nib." will follow your dreams and most random pens do to be honest um, but uh, um, it also in here you'll get the uh, what was a standard Visconti brochure booklet um, you don't get manuals with Viscontis most of the time so, so this basically just shows off it, it's a promotional booklet and it will show off um, now this actually has a little bit more detail than some of the the newer brochure booklets it shows the Visconti Villa there uh, in in Florence, and um, it uh, also shows some of the the pen making going on there. Uh, examining the the nibs, um, um, creating the bowels of the pens, uh, and and a, a brief history of uh, the company as well. Uh, director of this Florentine company founded in 1988 is Dante Del Vecchio. Well, Dante has now since moved on. He's moved on to Penida now, um, which is another well-known company. More for stationery, but they've started making pens. Um, but uh, here you'll also see some photos of heads of state using the pens. Uh, you'll also see uh, well-known figures. Um, like You have Opfer Winfrey there. Um... Uh, some of these uh, booklets will actually have I think, I think I've seen Sylvester Stallone in one of them as well um, and then you see the HRH editions, uh, Divinas you'll see the uh, Alchemy which is a two-ended nib pen yep, that's two nibs in a pen it's not a cheap pen uh, you'll see some of the uh, like the Christian Bible pens that Visconti have done uh, the Istos Arachnus, uh, which I have uh, in my collection as well. It's a lovely pen. Some Visconti Rembrandts, some Davinas. Uh, you'll see the uh, Michelangelo and, and some Homo Sapiens there. So, um, And then it will give you the warranty detail of the company. And uh, So basically, Visconti collections are guaranteed to be free from any and all mechanical mechanical defects for two years from date of purchase and you just have the rear of the booklet so uh, that's really all you get in the box you do actually get a, a rather sort of like sort of leather plush leather um, in here with the Visconti name uh, uh, and this is actually sort of this this is slightly embossed as well uh, so that's that's it in terms of the pen. Now this is a pen that I've had in my collection for uh, some time now. Um, so it has been inked up numerous times. I, I am a person that has to ink pens. I, a pen for me is to be written with. It Again, it, it is likewise a piece of art, but I have to write with my pens. Uh, I, I cannot just leave a pen uninked unwritten with so um, let's just bring out the pen 
and you'll see and this is a lovely lovely stunning pen if we can get some more light in here maybe you can see here this is a stunning stunning pen you'll see basically that these are um, supposed to depict the the um, swirls of green lush green and and brown and orange from the the um, Florentine Hills which is basically uh, what this pen is named the Florentine Hills um, so here you actually have the bridge clip on mine I am missing a little bit of enamel here sometimes the back enamel does flake off uh, this is something um, Visconti have addressed more in more recent pens uh, I haven't seen it this is the only pen that I've had that happen with the, the other side of the clip uh, has also a little bit that's flaked off as well um, that doesn't bother me to be honest but uh, at some point I might actually see if I can get that um, sorted um, but uh, you'll see here in terms of the cap itself it's a uh, it's a green cap but it also has like touches of like gold swirls and and darker green swirls in the cap it, it's a lovely cap material it's a double reservoir power so you can see here that's a double reservoir here you have the piston o-ring and then the rods uh, rods are made of titanium you'll see a little bit of inky water here as well because i have used it these are power vac fillers are very awkward to try and clean out uh, you will never get all of the ink uh, or water uh, watery uh, or inky water out of the pen but uh, that is the Florentine Hills and you can see here on the end cap as well you have that same sort of like bronzy sort of goldy sort of swirl going on there and uh, it's it is a stunning stunning pen um, a beautiful beautiful pen and if I just uh, bring back the piston you might be able to see it a little bit better there you go look at that it's that's a stunning look at the the chatoyant cell and the, those ribbons it really does pick up the light it's it is amazing so this uh, for me is another favorite from Visconti I uh, a lot of people like the London Fog better than the Florentine Hills. I I think they're both very close. Um, I think I like the London Fog just a little tad more, but um, I do like the, the Florentine Hills as well. Um, so it is a absolute stunning, stunning pen. So if I just push the piston back down and screw it up, what we'll do... If we move this out of the way and we will do uh, some size comparisons we'll do a weight check and we'll also um, do a comparison with other pens and then we'll do a writing sample so in terms of size this pen is around about 145 millimeters in length the the cap I would say is dead on 60 millimeters and we'll see if we can stop this from rolling because it's a round pen and they round pens do tend to roll this is around about 133 134 millimeters so this is an oversized pen for sure um, See if we can do a weight check on this. Um, zoom in a bit more. So, bear in mind this is uninked. This pen will hold around two to two and a half milliliters of ink. So, uninked, we're looking at 38 and a half grams. We're looking at just under 17 grams for the cap. And then the body, we're looking at just over 22 grams. So as I said, you're going to have about two milliliters to two and a half. Two and a half is the maximum you would get out of this. So you're going to be around about 24 and a half grams once the pen is fully inked. So that's not a bad weight of pen, to be honest. Uh, most I, I find the average weight pen is around 20 grams. So for me, this is an ideal weight for long writing sessions. Um, 
and this is absolutely stunning stunning pen so let's do a comparison shall we of other pens and we'll see how these look I'll put the Florentine Hills in place so from left to right we have the Pelican M600 turquoise white we have the Pelican M800 Royal Gold Raden. We have the M1000 Pelican. We have a Twisby Diamond 580AL. The uh, Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra Arco. We have the Florentine Hills from Visconti, which is a Homo Sapiens. We also have a Homo Sapiens Bronze Age Lava Edition. As you can see, the sizes are identical. We have a Lamy Lux or LX, which is a basically an all-star with a, a gold paint and gold trim and a black nib it's slightly more expensive than an all-star we have an Edison Collier here and then we have an Edison Perlet. so as you can see this really is in the oversized category Pelican M1000s are definitely oversized the M800s are bordering on an oversized pen so this definitely is an oversized pen so let's do a writing sample shall we so this is the Florentine Hills. Now this has a medium nib. Um, this is the very nib that I actually bought the pen with and it's a very bouncy, very springy nib. So this, as I said, is a medium nib. The ink I have inked up here is uh, actually Visconti green. Now, in terms of line variation, um, as I said, this is a very springy or bouncy nib. So here is with no pressure whatsoever. This is a medium nib. You can see it's it's a medium line and then I will try to apply a little bit more pressure each time and you can see the line variation that you are getting here now I try not to push my nibs that hard but you can see not only that it's a very very wet pen as well um, so this actually this nib is a very bouncy Visconti nib and uh, adds quite a bit of line variation as you can even see here in the writing sample that I've done here so let's do a few swirls you can try and flex it a little bit again I'm not going to want to push too hard and again you can see here in terms of, of, of these these squirrels or figure of eights you can see here how I'm pushing more on the downstroke and I'm getting a lot more line variation out of it and <laughs> this is still wet ink here so you can see this is a fire hose of a nib um, I'll do some wetness tests so let's do this we'll do a horizontal then a vertical that is a fire hose of a nib let's do some verticals because this will actually try and put down a little bit more ink yeah as you can see this is a fire hose of a nib now a lot of people don't like fire hoses of, uh, of nibs. I didn't to start with because on Rhodia, uh, or if, even if you're using Leuchtturm, say notebooks, they are very, very difficult to dry. That ink is still trying to dry uh, up here on, on the M. Um, so I on Rhodia, I find that this nib can take two, 2 minutes 30 seconds to dry. So I can't turn the page after I've written if I'm writing in a notebook for two and a half minutes. So 
that's a long time. Now, a lot of people don't like fire hose nibs because of that reason. Personally, I prefer them because I find the more ink you put down, the more smoother the experience is, and it just feels so much more luxurious when you write with it. So for me, I really, really do like fire hose nibs. Now, are they useful in a day-to-day -day setting? Of course not, uh, in terms of if you're taking meeting notes or things like that. Um, but this is a really, really nice nib. Um, I love writing letters with this. Um, I tend not to write in a notebook with, with fire hose nibs because it will take a long time or if I do I always start on a clean left hand page and then I have two pages so I don't have to hopefully turn the page if I'm taking meeting notes um, but uh, this is a, a fire hose of a nib and and uh, this is one of the reasons why I like Visconti's is that the nibs in general are quite wet and you can make the nib drier more well, lately some of the the Visconti nibs that have been coming out on newer models in 2017 have had a lot more drier nibs you may need to either floss the tines with a brass shim yourself or uh, take it to a nib mice if you want to make it fire hose wet but um, these older nibs are, I really really love and um, this is what sent me down the Visconti grail route and I now have over 50 Viscontis um, probably by the time I release this video it will probably be in the 60s um, these are really really super nice pens uh, and you can see here once inked up you get to see a little bit less of those swirls once the ink is in there but it's still a very very nice pen so there you have it um, that's the Visconti Homo Sapiens Florentine Hills thanks for watching please like comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video Bye-bye.